Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice. Here we take up MCQs based on important articles and news from the Hindu and the Indian Express newspaper. Topics which we are going to cover today are displayed on your screen. Let's begin the discussion. Now let's start our session with our first article which appeared on page 13 in the Indian Express. The context of this article is that Supreme Court held that charge sheets are not public documents and enabling their free public access violates the provisions of the CRPC, that is Criminal Code of Procedure, as it compromises the rights of accused victim and the investigation agencies. Now the purpose of picking that article is that UPSC is going into final details of legal terms which frequently feature in news. As in 2021, it has asked question based on term judicial custody. So we have taken practice MCQ on similar line based on the terms charge sheets and FIR. Now let's come to the practice question. In this practice question, you have to identify correct statements. So the first statement is a charge sheet can be forwarded to magistrate only by an officer above the rank of DSP or ACP. Now charge sheet as defined under section 173. CRPC is the final report prepared by a police officer or investigative agencies after completing their investigation of a case. Now, as per section 173, subclause 2, after preparing the charge sheet, the officer in charge of the police station and not the officer above the rank of DSP or ACP forwards it to a magistrate who is empowered to take notice of the offences mentioned in it. So, our first statement is incorrect. Also, the charge sheet should contain details of names, the nature of the information and offences, whether the accused is under arrest, in custody or has been released, whether any action was taken against him are all important questions that the charge sheet answers. Now let's come to the second statement. FIR has not been defined in either the IPC or CRPC. Now. The term charge sheet has been explicitly mentioned under the section 173 CRPC, but FIR has not been defined either in IPC or in CRPC. Instead, it finds a place under the police regulations or rules under section 154 of CRPC, which deals with information in cognizable cases. So our second statement is correct. So here correct answer is option B. That is two only. Answer of this PYQ is option B. Now our next question is based on this article which is about Leper 2 tank. Let's understood more about it with the help of MCQ. Also questions related to technological warfare has been asked in UPSC previously. Like this question came in 2016 about INS Ashtradharini. So you must be aware about the recent developments happening around the world with respect to missiles, tanks, etc. So let's come to the practice question. Here you have to identify the correct statements with reference to Leopard 2 tank. The first statement is, it is a third generation battle tank originally developed by United States of America. Now, Leopard 2 tank is a German manufactured third generation battle tank. So our first statement is incorrect. This tank has a range of about 500 km, not 1000 km. So our second statement is incorrect. Also, it first came into service in 1979 and you know that World War II happened between 1939 and 1945. So our third statement is incorrect. So with this, our correct answer is D, none of the above as all the statements are incorrect and answer of this PYQ is option C. Now let's briefly understand why this article came in news. Leopard 2 tank is an issue between Ukraine and Germany because Ukraine has been seeking to purchase the tanks from Germany. But Germany has been hesitant to sell them due to concerns about the ongoing conflict in Ukraine and the potential for the tanks to be used against Russian forces. So this would be an escalation of the involvement of NATO countries in the war, heightening the risk of the war spreading. Now our next question is based on this article. This article is about the faulty process of identifying the beneficiaries of Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Grami in West Bengal. The accusation is that the current list made by the state authorities is against the eligibility criteria for the PM Avas Yojana Grami. Now, as UPSC has been asking questions based on important scheme or yojana, like this question, based on Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana came in 2018. So here, on the similar lines, we have curated practice question based on Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Grami. In this question, you have to identify correct statements. The first statement is, it aims to provide paka house to the 
रूरल पुअर विद मिनिमम एरिया ऑफ हंड्रेड स्क्वायर मीटर नाउ प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना ग्रामीण इज अ सोशल वेलफेयर प्रोग्राम बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रूरल डेवलपमेंट टू प्रोवाइड हाउसिंग फॉर द रूरल पुअर इन इंडिया इट एम्स टू प्रोवाइड पक्का हाउस टू द रूरल पुअर विद मिनिमम एरिया ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव स्क्वायर मीटर एंड नॉट हंड्रेड स्क्वायर मीटर सो फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज इन करेक्ट अंडर दिस योजना द एलिजिबिलिटी इज एट द हाउस होल्ड विदाउट शेल्टर हाउस होल्ड लिविंग इन जीरो वन और टू रूम्स हाउसेज विद कच्चा वॉल एंड कच्चा रूफ डेस्टिट्यूट मैनुअल स्केवेंजर्स प्रोमेटिव ट्राइबल ग्रुप्स लीगली रिलीज बॉन्डेड लेबर ना लेट्स कम टू द सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट द फंड आर स्प्लिट इन अ फिफ्टी फिफ्टी रेशियो बिटवीन द सेंट्रल एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट इन प्लेन एरिया Now the cost of unit assistance is to be shared between the central and state government in the ratio of 60 to 40 in plain areas and 90 to 10 for northeastern and the Himalayan states. So our second statement is incorrect. Now let's come to the third statement. Gram Panchayat finalizes the list of eligible beneficiaries based on socio-economic and caste census 2011. Now the Gram Panchayat through the Gram Sabha. Select priorities and finalizes a permanent wait list of eligible beneficiaries prepared based on the socio-economic and caste census 2011. So our third statement is correct. So with this, our correct answer is option C. That is three only. Answer of this PYQ is option C. That is two and three only. Our next question is based on this article, which appeared on page nine in the Hindu newspaper. According to this article, recently Indian Federation of App-Based Transport Workers, on behalf of gig workers, filed a PIL, that is, public interest litigation, in the Supreme Court, demanding that union government provide succor to workers affected by the pandemic. Now, labor reforms is important for your pre as well as for your mains examination. This question, based on casual workers, came in year 2021. So, on similar lines, we have curated practice question based on gig economy. Now, gig economy is a labor market that relies heavily on temporary and part-time positions filled by independent contractors and freelancers rather than full-time permanent employees. They gain flexibility and independence, but little or no job security. So that is why petition has asked for gig workers and platform workers to be declared as. unorganized workers so they can come under the purview of the unorganized worker social security act 2008 so with this our first statement is incorrect currently they are not eligible for social security benefits so our second statement is incorrect once they are under the purview of this act they will be eligible for social security benefits like old age pension widow pension disability pension maternity benefits etc so both these statements are incorrect so our answer is option d neither one nor two answer of this pyq is option b now our next question is based on this article the context of this article is that odisha governor has begged the entry of foreign nationals inside the world famous jagannath temple in puri wading into a debate that has lasted for decades and periodically triggered controversy now as under indian heritage and culture temple architecture is important for your prelims examination as question based on somnath temple came in 2022 so here on the similar line we have curated practice question based on jagannath temple and in this question you have to identify incorrect statements so the first statement is the temple was constructed in the 9th century during the reign of eastern ganga dynasty now jagannath temple is an important hindu temple dedicated to lord jagannath a form of vishnu situated in puri in the state of odisha it was constructed in the 12th century and not 9th century by king antavarman juraganga dev of the eastern ganga dynasty so though it's constructed under the reign of eastern ganga dynasty but in 12th century and not in 9th century so our first statement is incorrect also this temple is known as white pagoda and not black pagoda so our fourth statement is incorrect now let's come to the second statement the bauda yatra tradition is related to the jagannath temple now according to folk stories lord jagannath and his sibling goddess subhadra and lord balabhadra returns from their aunt's palace at gundija temple to jagannath temple this journey is known as bauda yatra 9 days after the rath yatra the yatra or the return journey takes place so our second statement is correct now let's come to the third statement the daru wood is used to make the idol of lord jagannath 
Now, Daru's neem tree is used for making Lord Jagannath idol and the idols of Lord Balabhadra and Goddesses Subhadra. So, our third statement is correct. So, answer of this question is option C. One and four only, as we have to identify incorrect statements. Answer of this PYQ is option A. Now, our last question is based on this article, which appeared on page thirteen in the Indian Express. This article talks about the impact of dry, cold winter on different rabi crops. Now, as under agriculture, major crops and cropping patterns in various parts of the country is important for your prelims as well as mains examination. This question based on pulse production came in 2020. So here, on the similar lines, we have curated practice question based on rabi crops. In this practice question, you have to identify which of the following are considered rabi crops. The first is maize. Second is wheat, third is mustard, and the fourth is groundnut. Now, as you know, that there is rich variety of crops grown in different parts of the country. Despite this diversity, two broad cropping patterns can be identified. The first is Karif crops. These crops are sown in the rainy season, and in India, it is generally from June to September. Example of these are paddy, maize, soya bean, groundnut, and cotton. Next is Rabi crops. These crops are grown in the winter season from October to March. Example of these are wheat, mustard, gram, linseed. So here you can see that maize and groundnuts both are Kharif crops and wheat and mustard are Rabi crops. So with this our answer is option C that is 2 and 3 only. Answer of this PYQ is option A. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more such updates.